Subscribe to both of my YouTube channels, Sharon Winbush and God is Sharon. Turn on notifications and share all videos. Press my name below this video and that will take you to my channel where you will find more videos on this subject and many others. This is the sentencing report for Larry L. McGee, criminal case number 19-CR-00699-NLH. Dash 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 it was uh, before the Honorable Noel L. Hillman, United States District Court Judge in Newark, New Jersey, and it was Thursday, May 6, 2021, at 2.05 p.m. via Zoom. Actually, it was Camden, New Jersey. Uh, the majority of it is redacted initially until you get to page 34, and then it begins just preliminary information. And I'm only going to highlight the pages I deemed significant. On page 47, uh, the court is stating, uh, the court means the judge, Mr. McGee pled guilty before the other defendants. Then on page 48, it's, uh, the judge is also saying, unauthorized transfer or, transfer or use of any means of identification unlawfully produ to produce or obtain another means of identification. So he's outlining the uh, different points of the crime. Victims of the offense were vulnerable. Uh, they obtained the information of incarcerated individuals, then using their identities, engaged in certain transactions and credit line modifications, uh, adding in false vendors and so forth in order to boost the credit scores of those individuals then was going to use those lines of credit as he did as part of his scheme mr mcgee joined in the scheme knowing of its extent and then it's again emphasizing the use of vulnerable victims uh to further the conspiracy uh McGee's lawyer was arguing that the vulnerable victim had no damage done to them based on the scheme. Inmates were not vulnerable, were not in any way damaged by the scheme. And the judge argues back, uh, identity of these individuals were stolen and credit lines were inflated and not paid in full uh, were obtained. And the negative impact on the credit rating of the individuals whose identities were stolen. Victimization of the individual whose identity was stolen. Identities stolen and the lines of credit taken out in their name without their authorization. That's the very nature of the scheme here. So the judge is arguing, yes, the inmates were victims. Victims of either a state, local, uh, state, or federal crime based on the unauthorized use of their identities to obtain credit. Um, it said re relevant conduct fairly established, unauthorized access to credit accounts, identity theft was not part and parcel of the scheme. It was central to the scheme. And then the court goes on to further say, Mr. McGee uh, accepted responsibility and he immediately cooperated with the United States. Uh, he had a criminal background going back to when he was 10 and a half years old in Illinois. And um, the purpose of this is to uh, determine the 5K1.1 uh, allowances of the court. And under the 5K1.1 uh, they had a departure moment mo motion where they wanted basically to lessen the, his sentence. And then again, uh, they're talking about the government moves for a departure based on the 5K1.1. So three times they're emphasizing he got a 5K1.1 letter as a result of his immediate cooperation. 
then it says the defendant has provided substantial assistance in the investigation or prosecution of another person uh, that committed an offense. Uh, he, the judge is saying, I was told three separate matters that Mr. McGee has provided assistance on. That means he was a snitch in three separate matters. He was a government informant in three separate matters. And then this is where he's talking about the R. Kelly case. I have also received information from the United States concerning a matter in another federal district and have taken that into consideration as part of my overall determination as to the appropriate departure. So on those three matters uh, demonstrates to my satisfaction that in those three uh, matters that Mr. McGee has provided useful and significant information. And then it goes on to say he assisted another prosecution entity, another sovereign, and another matter related to Mr. Arena, and has that has been relayed to the judge. And it saved them years of work, uh, subject of cooperation, and his participation was significant and useful. Mr. McGee has been anything other than reliable, truthful, and complete in these matters and his cooperation with the state and federal authorities. So they're saying he's been a very good federal informant. And uh, he provided background information, uh, breadth across jurisdiction, the nature of the scheme, insider knowledge, insider style, status. Uh, anytime anyone does cooperate, the judge is saying they do suffer uh, a higher uh, than ordinary risk of danger. And Mr. McGee cooperated in a timely fashion, unwavering in his ability and desire to provide such assistance. That means he was a good house nigga. unwavering then uh, Larry goes on to talk uh, dear honorable judge Noel Hillman I understand that my actions have caused us to be here today I'm very sorry and aware of my efforts in this case I am guilty of course you are I knew what I was doing uh, was wrong of course you did I placed the burden on my uncaused family I should not have participated in any of this the effects of my actions have caused uncertainty in my household. I recently, two, three years, just moved over here in search of a better education in schools and area for my kids. My wife depends on me greatly. All my kids are under my roof, all four of them. I have embarrassed my family, yes you have, and friends and everybody that knows of your existence. My two eldest daughters recently graduated from college and here I am in federal court about to get sentenced. It is unbearable to look at my kid's face regarding this topic, and everybody is still trying to show me sympathy, but it was just stupid, because you're stupid, and I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm just going to, I don't know, uh, I just want to move forward. I have a plan to pay Synchrony their money back. I should have never gotten involved in this, should never gotten involved with him. I knew what I was doing was wrong. I can't, I can't, I can't lie and say certain people in my life told me it was a bad idea. You know, it was a bad idea, but I was trying to put my family ahead. It was a stupid, it was so stupid. I just, I just, I would have this, did things different. I get out of this, I'm going to trucking school. I do not want to disappoint my wife, my kids. I won't be back in nobody's court. And I am going to continue my uh, to advocate against human trafficking. I'm going to keep going with that. Thank you, Your Honor. And then his lawyer, Mr. Brownstein, asked for non-custodial sentence. And he went on to say, Mr. McGee should be a non-custodial sentence uh, because his blog still helps young women, still helping little girls, 
still helping society to prevent the predators and the pedophiles and preying on these young children, vulnerable children. Who would that be? Helping all these young women. Uh, he assists in pain and helping these young kids that have been traumatized. So he's recommending either a non-custodial sentence or house arrest. How does buying somebody a $3,000 couch help a traumatized victim? This guy really bamboozled the judge and the court. We need to make his parole board aware of this. His lawyer uh, argued that incarcerating him accomplishes nothing. It's just another black man going to jail uh, for a nonviolent case. Then he says, um, the prosecution argued taking others individuals, many of whom were inmates, PII, having their credit inflated, applying for fraudulent credit cards in their names, and then making fictitious transactions, the proceeds of which were deposited into bank accounts controlled by Mr. McGee. Uh, they had a hacker obtain the identities of inmates. Mr. McGee obviously used these inmates' identities to apply for these credit cards and profited from that. Then it states, um, the judge was saying that he wants to sentence him to deter uh, criminal conduct and to protect the public from further crimes of the defendant. That didn't happen. And he went on to say he is free to disregard the sentencing guidelines and the policy statements in fashioning his overall sentence. And he reviewed that Mr. Arena got 48 months after a modest variance, which was four years, and Moda Least got 36 months after a similar calculation. He got three years. Larry McGee did 11 months. The judge uh, states, uh, I am asked to consider that he, through his internet activities, his social media activities, has engaged in helping others in society who have suffered various traumas and have been victimized. I don't know who the hell that is. Uh, he represents a sincere desire to help others who have suffered trauma. Bullshit. Uh, and then he he referred to him as a knucklehead. I do agree with that. Uh, he The ranging of the fraud, the extended uh, period of years that it occurred, the inmates' identities that were stolen, who were the true victims in this case. The judge has to consider all of that. And then he went on to uh, say Mr. McGee was the second most important person in his enterprise uh, after Arena. He's the one that recruited Moda Least. Uh, Mr. McGee was literally in the middle. So he imposed a sentence of 18 months on the two counts to run concurrently. And with a supervised release of five years. So he has, he's on probation for five years and restitution of $1,506,393.73 to be paid by the co-defendants. On the um, sentencing, the bottom paragraph says while on supervised release you must not commit another federal state or local crime must not possess a firearm or other dangerous device and must not possess any illegal controlled substances he must provide the probation office full disclosure of his financial records he must provide monthly statements of his income and you must release all financial records to the probation officer.